Welcome to this tutorial on writing hypotheses for a quantitative research plan. This is Dr. Amanda Rockinson's AppQ. And in this tutorial on hypotheses, we're going to talk about the number of hypotheses you need to write for each research question for a quantitative proposal. Now you may be thinking, well, I just thought if I had one research question, I would have one hypothesis. That's not necessarily the case. So we're going to talk about it, and by the end of this tutorial, you should be able to determine how many hypotheses, both null and research, that you need for each research question that you've proposed. Now some research questions do only have one hypothesis. In fact, every research question should have at least one corresponding research and null hypothesis. However, as I noted, sometimes there are more than one, or there needs to be more than one corresponding research and corresponding null hypothesis. While completing my doctoral program, which was many, many years ago, I learned from my mentor, Dr. Rovai, that the number of hypotheses is actually based on the number of variables under investigation. Let's take a closer look at this. Let's consider an example. Let's take an example research question and talk about how many hypotheses it needs, or how many null hypotheses it needs. Let me, let me just make a small caveat here before we move on. Usually in research proposals, the null hypothesis is stated because that's what's statistically tested. So in almost every research proposal, there needs to be at least the corresponding null hypotheses to every question. However, some universities and some professors also like you to state the research or alternative hypotheses. But let's move on talking about the number of hypotheses. Let's look at an example question. Is there a difference in second grade students' attitudes toward math who participate in the Math 2.0 gamification app as compared to those who participate in a traditional math classroom? Now as we look at this question, we need to identify the variables. Because remember I said the number of hypotheses is based on the variables. First of all, let's take a look at the independent variable. Here we can see there is one independent variable with two levels or two groups, the type of math program. And the two groups are the Math 2.0 gamification app versus traditional math instruction. Now let's identify the dependent variable. Do you see what it is? What are we trying to affect? Well, the attitudes toward math. So there is one dependent variable. Since there's one independent variable, and only one dependent variable, that means we only need one null hypothesis. For example, there is no statistically significant difference in second grade students' attitudes toward math based on whether they're participating in the Math 2.0 gamification app as opposed to participating in the traditional math class. Now let's take this example and add additional variables. So you can see that the addition of variables results in the need for additional hypotheses. Let's add an additional independent variable to our question. So our question reads, what is the effect of the Math 2.0 gamification app and sex on second grade students' attitudes toward math as measured by the attitude toward math mathematics assessment. So here you can see we still have one dependent variable, the attitudes toward math, but now we've added an independent variable. There are two independent variables, type of math program, and now sex. So this research question actually requires three null hypotheses. It requires two main effect null hypotheses, one for each independent variable, and one interaction effect null hypotheses. You can see the hypotheses listed here. There's one for main effect for the um, independent variable of sex. There's one for main effect for the independent variable of type of math program. So for example, here you can see hypothesis, null hypothesis one, there is no significant difference in students' attitudes toward math as measured by the attitudes toward mathematics assessment based on the type of math program they participated in um, in second grade. Then you'll also see that there's a third hypothesis, and this is what's called the interaction null hypothesis or interaction effect null hypothesis. And it includes both 
independent variables. There will be no statistically significant difference in students' attitudes toward math as measured by the Attitudes Toward Mathematics assessment based on the type of math program and sex. So if you're conducting a research study examining the difference between groups and you have one independent variable and one dependent variable, you test one null hypothesis, the main effect null hypothesis. If you have two independent variables and one dependent variable, you test three null hypotheses. Two main effect null hypotheses, so one for each independent variable, and one interaction effect null hypothesis. Each time you add an independent variable to your question, your number of hypotheses increase. Let's say, for example, you have three independent variables and one dependent variable. You then test seven null hypotheses. Three main effect null hypotheses, one for each independent variable. Three first order interaction null hypotheses, so the interaction between two variables. And one second order interaction null hypotheses, the interaction between all three variables. So as you can see, every time you increase the number of independent variables in a question, you increase the number of null hypotheses you need. So now that you understand how the number of independent variables affects the number of null hypotheses, let's turn our attention to the dependent variables. If you plan to examine two or more correlated dependent variables, and remember, I, and I want you to hear right now what I'm saying, correlated. So not just I have two random dependent variables, but they've been shown to have a significant correlation in the research. So if you have significant correlated dependent variables, then you need to propose a hypothesis for the linear combination of those variables, as well as each of those dependent variables separately. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. Let's take a look at a variation of the question that we've been working with. What if we revise the question to have two correlated dependent variables? And then we pose the question, or the researcher posed the question, what is the effect of participation in the Math 2.0 Gamification app on second grade students' math motivation scores on the internal and external regulation scale. So here you can see we have two correlated dependent variables, internal motivation and external motivation. There's still one dependent variable. We now need three null hypotheses for this one question. First, we propose the null hypothesis about the linear combination of the two dependent variables. It would read something like this. There is no statistically significant difference between second grade students' mean scores on the math internal and external motivation scores based on the type of math program they participated in. Then you can see the second and third null hypotheses each deal with the dependent variables separately, first with internal motivation and then external motivation. And so we've been looking at the number of hypotheses needed based on the perspective of hypotheses of difference or whenever a researcher or we're examining whether there's a difference between groups. So what happens then if you're not interested in difference but you're interested in association or correlation? Well, the rules that we've been looking at hold true when we are examining uh, variables of interest, predictor variables, and criterion variables in correlation studies. The number of null hypotheses for each research question is based on the number of variables under study. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example research question. The, let's, um, again, let's use a, a question similar to what we've been working with. Let's say a researcher, we pose the question, is there a significant variability in second grade students' math achievement based on their level of math motivation, both internal and external? Now here in this question, this um, first of all is implying probably a predictive correlation. So we have, a criteria, we have criterion and predictor variables. Here we have one criterion variable, and that is math achievement, 
kind of like an independent variable. And we have two predictor variables, kind of like dependent variables, internal and external motivation. So just like the question with multiple dependent variables, this research question requires three null hypotheses. We need a null hypothesis that considers the linear combination of the predictor variables, as well as each predictor variable separately. So here you can see listed are the three hi null hypotheses. The first one is for the linear combination of both internal and external motivation. The second is for internal motivation. And the third is for external motivation. Now we've talked about a lot of different variables independent variables, dependent variables, criterion, predictor variables. We have one fin final type of variable that we need to consider, and that's a control variable or a covariant. It's important to note that the control variable should be reflected in the null hypothesis. However, it's not necessarily going to affect the number of hypotheses that you're going to propose for the research question. So the number of null hypotheses proposed for each research question is going to be dependent upon the number of independent or dependent or predictor or criterion or variables of interest that you have in that question. This concludes this tutorial and now you should be ready to identify each research question and be able to write the correct number of null hypotheses for each question in your proposal.